Hey friends, welcome back to another pottery tutorial. So today we're in my studio and I'm going to be showing you how to sand your pottery safely. So hopefully by now you know all about silica dust and you know you don't want to be breathing in clay particles and silica into your lungs because it can cause a big problem called silicosis. Today I want to show you how you can actually sand your pottery safely and not get silicosis. So let's get into it. Okay, so I threw and trimmed these cups just like usual and uh, I fired them once and now they're in the bisque stage. And when I get to this stage, I usually have to do a little bit of sanding just on the bottom here. And that's because I'm carving in my signature uh, to the bottom here instead of using a stamp. I don't like to use a stamp because I think handwriting the signature each time kind of adds like a little bit of interest somehow. It adds some uniqueness to the pot and it's not just like a kind of like factory made kind of stamp thing. Anyway, that's how I think about it. So that's why I carve in. However, it adds some roughness to it. So I need to sand this down. And the easiest time to sand is in the bisque stage. So I'm not a fan of sanding the entire pot. In my opinion, I think if you're a decent uh, thrower and trimmer, most of your pot should be uh, smooth. Of course, if you have like the odd little scraggly bit that gets on, that's also fine to sand. But I'm not a fan of sanding the whole pot for two reasons. The first reason is because it's just another step and why. Um, and the second reason is, as I mentioned, it creates dust. And this is that silica dust that you really don't want to be breathing in as you're working because it can cause silicosis. Not fun. <laughs> so I'm just going to be sanding the bottoms here and I'll show you how I do that now. So this process is called wet sanding and it's super easy, guys. Um, all you need is some water. So I have some water in this bucket and some sandpaper. And then you just take your pot, your bisque pot, dunk the part that needs to be sanded into the water and you just wanna sand that part. So yeah, I usually dip it a couple of times and just like sand it as I go. And then when I'm done, I'll kind of slosh it around to get off the extra dust. So the goal here is that all of the dust is being captured in the water and it's not going into the air, which is great because then we can sand it, we can get rid of all that extra clay, but without putting it in the air where we can breathe it in. So then I just have a look around my pot and see if there's any weird bumps or anything else that I need to sand off and then I'll just set it aside and I'm gonna finish all the rest of these now and then we'll go over and wash our pots because we're gonna need to wash the extra dust off. Okay guys, now we are in my lovely sink area where I keep my sink and my tools and everything and we're going to wash these pots so that any of the remaining dust from the sanding gets off of them. And then I have this rack here that's just for drying. I use it mostly for my tools so they can all dry out here before I put them away. But now we'll put our pots on there to dry. So I'm literally just going to run this pot underwater and get any of the extra dust off. Okay, yeah, I suppose I should mention why we want to get the dust off. If you have your pots that are too dusty, the glaze might not stick to it very well. So you'll get problems like shivering. Maybe you want to check out my cracking video if you uh, want to hear more about shivering and different types of glaze cracks. You'll also want to wash your pottery if, for example, you leave it on the shelf for more than a week or so. Because the pottery studio, as much as we try not to make it a dusty space, space it is a dusty space <laughs> no matter how hard you clean so yeah like any dust just like floating around in the air will settle on your pots and you'll want to wash them before you glaze them and then i always wash my pots and then leave them to dry for 24 hours before i glaze them and that makes sure that they're uh, porous enough and dry enough so that they can also absorb the glaze So yeah, all that's left in these pots is I'm going to let them dry out, I'm gonna glaze them, I'm gonna put them back in the kiln for the final fire, and then they'll be finished and hopefully beautiful. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see.
So yeah, that's it for me today, guys. If you have any questions about wet sanding or sanding or studio maintenance in general, just leave them in the comments down below. I'm usually lurking about uh, answering most of the questions. If you want to learn more about me and my studio, you can find me over on Instagram, at Pottery to the People. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.